Well, tell me what you're, uh, Dr. Montagnier, what you're doing right now. What is your current state? Well, I'm affairs? continuing what I already described the last uh, two or three years, that uh, we are pursuing the idea that uh, there are structures in water, or what we call now structural water or signalized water, coming from uh, electromagnetic... Signalized? Yes, signalized, oh, okay. signalized water. Okay. Uh, which keeps uh, some memory, I like to, to say the word, memory of water, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, DNA sequences. That's, of course, uh, amazing that uh, a liquid uh, can uh, keep an organization like DNA yeah. in, in, some, in some structure. But I think there are more and more data coming from physicists uh, showing that uh, there are several possible phases in water. In liquid water. Mm. For instance, uh, physicists have shown that the calcium carbonate, which uh, normally crystallizes as calcite, yes. uh, when it is uh, dissolved in uh, water submitted to magnetic field, yes. will crystallize in another form of oh. crystal, which is called aragonite. Uh -huh. Much yes. smaller crystals. Actually, uh -huh. uh, many people know that that uh, if you treat uh, water by a magnetic field, it will prevent the formation of calcium carbonate in tubing and plumbing. Yes, mm -hmm. that's already known. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are physicists which have been studying this in detail, ah. and clearly, the, this transformation of water is quite stable. It's quite stable. It could, could last for months, even, even years. So this is, show, this is really showing that water can keep some uh, information, some structure, which we could, of course we add on another compound, which is the calcium carbonate. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we are uh, coming back to my own work. Uh, we have shown that uh, some DNA sequences, first belonging to bacterial DNA or uh, viral DNA, could uh, induce in water some what we call nanostructure, nanostructure, we mm have -hmm. called it uh, nanions, 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 which uh, are, are stable also. And the amazing thing is that they keep exactly the memory of the sequence of that, of that the, the DNA from which it originates. So this is what we have shown uh, last year and published actually recently in Journal of Physics, that um, we can uh, uh, put a tube of water nearby a tube of diluted DNA emitting electromagnetic mm -hmm. signals. Mm -hmm. And uh, after uh, overnight, uh, after injection of uh, specific uh, frequencies, with the low frequency starting at 7 Hertz, mm -hmm. We can induce in the tube of water some structure which can be then recognized by a DNA polymerase mm -hmm. called the TAC polymerase, which uh, is used with a technique called PCR, polymerase chain reaction, and retrieve the DNA sequence. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is tricky, and uh, we have done it many times in our lab, but we want also now uh, this to be reproduced in other labs with our help first, but also without our help, so that the, the phenomenon will be established. You know, in science, mm -hmm. uh, phenomenon have to be reproduced. The experiments has to be, have to be reproduced yes. in order to be part of the general knowledge. Mm -hmm. so, so we have, of course, working hard on this, but I think it will uh, come out uh, probably this year. You have labs then elsewhere, and can you say where? We, we have uh, several labs uh, outside uh, France, in Germany, in the United States. And, uh, oh, that's good. And maybe China later. <laughs> so you have sympathet pe sympathetic people who want, yes, to, who want yes, to get the, the results. Yes, the problem is to find uh, uh, people which show at least are open, are an open mind. This yes. is the problem. You know, yes. Some people say this is... Uh, it can't happen. It can, uh, <laughs> they are mental rigidity, or I call mental... Uh, Viscosity. <laughs> Viscosity. And, uh, I, call it is, I call it mental rigor mortis. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> depending on something, I call that retrograde orthodoxy. <laughs> <laughs> retrograde orthodoxy. <laughs>
for the most intense signals are coming so far, what we found, from some sequence included in bacterial DNA or viral DNA. Mm -hmm. But we are, are almost pretty sure that at lower level, we can also detect signals coming from the cellular, the human DNA itself. Ah. And of course, uh, which sequence are mostly involved in that? This is something we are now exploring. This is something quite new, not published. But uh, we think those sequences which are piloting the others, perhaps, it's a cascade of resonance, yes. uh, could play a big role in, uh, in normal differentiation, uh, embryonic differentiation, to yes. pilot the shaping of the organs, of the organism. Right, so the whole original idea of embryology, that there is a guiding field, of, a yes. biologic field, there are different names. Yeah, there are this different is names not a new idea, field. of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, oh, and that, uh huh. And when you say it, a particular a sequence with, it, or do you think there's a certain segment of the DNA chain that is the radio transmitter? Is, I have some idea. I can yes. I think. Well, we are exploring the idea that probably there are the repetitious sequence. You know, DNA, the human DNA is made of three percent of genes sequence coding for proteins. Yes. And regulatory sequence, but there are also a high, high number, maybe half of the DNA, half our DNA, 50%, is made of so-called repetitious sequences. Yes, yes, right. Nobody knows. No one knows. Them. Nobody yeah. knows what they are for. Right. But they are probably the, uh, the I would say, the, the resonance, the resonator uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. of, uh -huh. of, you know, of some signaling. And they also, they can retransmit the signal to other sequences as well. <coughs> This idea, I was at a seminar 30 years ago, where, um, or in the late 80s, 20 years ago, uh, where this idea that the, perhaps the DNA, that it, in, it was pursued in a speculative way, that perhaps the DNA molecule itself is a antenna of some sort. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. And you are saying that in some in some. And this is probably internal uh, inside the cell, you know, so we are picking yes. up probably uh, an extra vibration, not the real inside the vibration is probably very small, very low intensity, very low mm -hmm. frequency. So we may not be able to pick up this, but by using uh, our system of inducing resonance of a higher level, we might also pick up, uh, pick up something and uh, modify the differentiation, for instance. This would be a proof. But then it would, when we get to that level of, of you know, driving embryonic development or, or continued development, then it, it, ultimately the whole body has to be a, a, a coordinated system of, of resonances and so we forth. Are, we are constructors, the they were we're, plants, you know, we are programs. We are what? We are constructed, you know, yes. like uh, from a, a plant program, yes. something which uh, say to each cell, you have to be there, you have to multiply. Yes. at that stage to form something mm -hmm. bigger than the cell itself. You know, mm -hmm. this, uh, this is fascinating, actually. We are, you know, probably this comes from, uh, if it is linked, of course it is imprinted in the DNA. It comes from billions of years. We have mm -hmm. uh, the life on Earth have learned how to make this mm -hmm. for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. In the bacteria, is it, uh, is it clear where the signaling process is going on in the bacterial uh, uh, In some cases, we have identified the, the gene, actually, or the fragment, because it's not a, a whole gene. It's uh, just a small frequency, about uh, between 100 and 300 base pairs, which are emitting these signals. And I have some collaborators working on oh. the structure of the sequence, which is really the, the source of the resonance. Oh, you, so you can, in other words, you can, br you can lies off the other parts and still get the signal from these yes, we can, several hundred base uh, we pairs. Can, uh, yes, we can fragment, it, fragment the fragment DNA it. and uh, have, the, have the signal. Actually, so if we were making it too big, it doesn't work uh, to make it. So, of course, we don't know exactly in, uh, in, in life how this works, but... Uh, yes. 
we are, to, we are studying mostly DNA fragments from the plasma patients, which probably are coming from apoptotic cells, cells dying, dying mm -hmm. cells. So they are already fragmented. Right, and they're already different because they're dying cells. Uh, when you, are, are these signals also in the, uh, in the low frequency range? With the seven hertz? Uh, 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 yes, they, well, they vibrate with uh, very low frequency, but they, when you, you know, they, what is vibrating after that is the water. The, the signals yes. come from the DNA, right. but uh, water surrounds mm -hmm. the DNA right. molecule, and then the water vibrates when we excite with a very low frequency, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, starting with seven hertz, uh, going back, going up to 10, 15, 50, 100. Uh, mm -hmm. And the response of, to that reson uh, the resonance response is higher frequency, is about between 1,000 and 3,000 hertz. Seems to be similar for any kind of DNA because this is vibration, I would call that the carrier waves of, of water. Uh, where the, the electromagnetic signaling will organize the water in some structure, which uh, I call anions of certain size, mm -hmm. because we can filter them between 20 and 100 nanometers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and those uh, structures are relatively st stabilized by their own emission of mm -hmm. electromagnetic signals. And they are, at, uh, in one way, similar to all sources of DNA, but also different at a lower level. Probably there is some modulation. If we take an, an example, a comparison, it's like the carrier wave, which is used in uh, television, for instance, mm -hmm. for many stations. Then up on top of this carrier wave, you have modulation, mm -hmm. uh, which are specific of one uh, television station, television emission. So I. So if that, you could that, separate that, you think you haven't gotten uh, quite yes, to separating we, we, out the... Yes, we haven't uh, succeeded yeah. yet, but we think we could. Yes. You have to build what they call in radio, you have to build the detector to take out from the carrier wave the, the exactly. informational yes, signal. Yes, yes. <clears throat> the uh, 7 hertz is interesting. Of course, one thinks right away of the, uh, the Schumann resonance. Absolutely, yes. Which is, has to be in ways we don't completely understand related with living process. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, probably it was important for the origin of life that uh, this mm. uh, emission already was there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this uh, is a very low intensity and could change, of course, the very because this is probably related to the lightning on the surface of the herbs. Mm -hmm. But uh, since uh, now a few decades, we are completely surrounded by electromagnetic waves of much higher intensity and frequency do the our human activities. So the problem the question is those this electromagnetic uh, smog or fog does it interact with our own life? Yeah. Apparently not because we are still uh, yes. alive. <laughs> right. We live longer. Right. And uh, children grow uh, grow better or higher. Yes. And then uh, our sisters. But uh, what are the long term effects we don't know. No, we don't, do we? But some, yeah. But somehow it also implies that we we can survive a lot of. We're somehow very specifically tuned then, into these, uh, to the frequencies. No, probably they are protect, protective mechanisms against this. Probably against the effect of uh, mm -hmm. external waves. Yes. <clears throat> because the our brain also is generating low frequency wave. The alpha waves also at the range of seven. Yes. Hertz. Yes. <clears throat> what what was it originally that caused you to look at the radio frequency? To go back well, and how to, you got started with it. Uh, you know, this started from some old experiments I made at the Pasteur Institute when I was there, uh, trying to uh, separate from HIV, the AIDS agent, mm -hmm. uh, from its possible contaminant, which were mycoplasma, spore bacteria. Mm -hmm. And for that, I used filtration, and uh, I was surprised to find that the filtrate, the mycoplasma filtrate, which had no mycoplasma at all, no mycoplasma DNA, could uh, retrieve the mycoplasma when it was incubated, this filtrate, with human cells, mm -hmm. human mm -hmm. 
So I thought some information, some genetic oh, yeah. information, uh, starting from DNA, could be transmitted mm. without DNA. So this is mm. what I thought. I knew, of course, the work of Jacques Benveniste. And, uh, oh, I see. And so Contamination the, was out of the question. I mean, what the first question one would ask is, is it possible that there was some contamination that that the sterilization wasn't complete. Of course, I asked that. Uh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> but you Many times, uh, you know, the filter could this be yeah. broken down. So on. No, I, we, we checked that. We spent yeah. years, actually, on that. Phenomenon. Yeah. And, and it, uh, it was, <laughs> no, it wouldn't it go away. It wouldn't go away. Mm -hmm. From a small microplasma. And we think probably uh, this implied that the genetic information in the filtrate was small DNA fragments of the microplasma genome could recombine or reconstruct a, a whole DNA, whole infectious DNA, with yeah. the help of uh, human cells. It really is amazing. Uh, uh, this was yeah. so. <laughs> I yeah. haven't proven that yet, but uh, right. my work is, is uh, you haven't like, make it makes it possible. Right, but your other experiments that do prove it. I mean, you you have proven the. The regen you have proven the regeneration. Of, I have proven the regeneration of, of a small DNA, but not a yeah, small uh, DNA genome. But uh, I think it's possible uh, for a small uh, DNA, small bacterial DNA, which is 400,000 base base pair, right. or a viral DNA like HIV, which is 10,000 10, base pair. Mm -hmm. Because we did also the same type of experiments for HIV as well. But it's more difficult to to show this uh, by filtration because we don't have the the proper filters you know, for small DNAs. Oh, small you, can't, you can't small make virus. a physical filter. We can we can uh, retain the uh, viruses by mm -hmm. filter of, one, of, of uh, 100 nanometers, 20 nanometers. But mm -hmm. you can always say that the virus can is, is a little bigger, but. Yes. Not that bigger than the bacterial the other bacteria, mm -hmm. so it could pass through even a twenty nanometer filter. Mm -hmm. Yes, my first thought. Uh, yeah, I thought of contamination. I mean, it was obvious given. Well, the contamination, of course, is the word. Given I've the been rigor of your approach, you would consider that thousands of times. Of course, <laughs> my second thought was something. Another thing that uh, you know, I mentioned to you b before we recorded that I, I have Lyme disease, and having a disease makes you more interested in uh, certain things and maybe things you used to not think about. So, uh, w in my research into the Lyme disease, one of the things that I came across was this theory of um, pleomorphic bacteria. I'm sure you're familiar with that. That was something that was, well, the name, uh, what is her name? Uh, uh, Klinenberger, yeah, Amy, Amy Klinenberger. Klinenberger Nobel. Yeah, Klinenberger I know, Nobel. I know very well the story because, you know, when I was a young student, yes, uh, my first thesis, uh, the part which would be uh, just a bibliography to look at the yes. subject, I wish I would just have to look at the reference and the papers, yes. and the subject given by uh, my boss was uh, L forms of bacteria. Oh, really. So I went through all the work of uh -huh. Klinberger, Nobel, Dinas in Boston. Yes, I and that. Uh, it's true that there are. Well, some people think they are just generative forms, but uh, since they can reverse to proper bacteria, I think they are still alive. And the idea may be that uh, because they are called L form or filtering form, you know, because yes. they can pass through the, yes. the bacterial filters. Yes. And so when I read about the passing through filter thing, I, that was my other thought. Well, of maybe, course, maybe, yes. maybe the today. I mean, when I read the Klinenberger paper, I was so impressed with the thing and how much it had been a part of. It had been a part of medical research going back to the back to the twenties, even even earlier when when tuberculosis and syphilis were the were the killer diseases, and everybody was working on that. And those are very both of those. I mean, I think every bacteria has its own little tricks and. Very special, uh, but there, there had been a great deal of study of that. Of course, the the relationship to Lyme disease was that's a spirochete. People have proposed well that has that also has pleomorphic forms. Yes, absolutely. it has L forms. Uh, I wondered if uh, it was possible when you were getting these filtrates 
is it possible the bacteria you're dealing with were going into a have yes, been in some other in phase? Yes, in that case, you should, can, you should be able to detect the DNA. Uh, yes. In my case, in a filtration in microplasma, ah, I cannot detect the DNA. Right. We, but it's true technique. that some yes. microplasma yes. can show also a pleomorphism, a small uh, uh, sphere, spheres of about 100 nanometers. They show, they show that like a uh, uh, pearl. Uh, String yes, a string. A, st yeah. a, st a string. A ah, string, right. of pearls. string of pearls. Yeah. Yeah. You can see uh, then very well at the electron microscope. Uh, ah. have some pictures. Uh -huh. yes. Again, some people say this is just degeneration, not right. what it is, because they are very right. regular. And uh, you can see, uh, aside from them, some uh, regular yeah. form. So the PCR technique would uh, make it possible to detect what in the past would be considered a filter, filterable yes, bacteria. Yes. Today w they would be detected. Yeah, the, the PCR can uh, tell you which uh, amal yeah. DNA is in those yes. uh, structures. Yes. I, you know, I, I wondered, uh, do you th nonetheless, I, I do want to ask you, even if it's a little bit off the topic, do you think that uh, w what's accepted today, from what I have been able to read, what's accepted is that only a small number of bacteria, only a small number of, of species of bacteria are accepted to be pleomorphic. The vast majority are considered not in the general literature. Would you say that, or maybe I'm wrong in that well, characterization, well, uh, would, would you uh, say that's true though? We may change this word actually by our own uh, attack. You know, we use a lot of antibiotics. Yeah. And uh, bacteria, of course, are selected to resist. Yeah. Uh, so they can exchange, as you know, they can exchange the formation, uh, DNA for resistance, but they yeah. can also uh, stay in form which are invisible to the immune system. And now, knowing that, yes, uh, knowing that uh, we can uh, form form some nanostructure of water, mm -hmm. which can circulate in the blood, mm -hmm. we can also imagine some uh, DNA formation from bacteria. Viruses be kept as a form which is completely invisible to the immune system, which is just water, mm -hmm. and also resistant to any kind of antibiotics or any kind of treatment. So, so this is another way for the bacteria oh, to escape. So not simply a visible form, even though it's very small, but actually ghost. Yes, a ghost. <laughs> so in that sense, yeah, that's interesting or well, scary too, because uh, it means scary, a, a yes. disease could be there and you couldn't. You cannot detect it. That means that our medicine will have to advance to the wave phase, yes. let's call it. Yes, of course, you can detect so that, them by waves. By yeah, by which means that we could also destroy them by waves if that's what we, we want to do. We can also do that, uh, yes, yeah. certainly. And maybe by In no the future, other means. Yes. Yeah. And maybe this is increasing because of the electromagnetic environment, you know, more. Yes. More electromagnetic waves circulating, more formation of those forms mm -hmm. uh, in, in the blood of people. Mm -hmm. So there are many tricks of what actually bacteria can uh, use to resist. Because, of course, we, are we were used at the beginning when they were discovered to acute infection, acute bacterial infection. But now, of course, we, are we have been treating well by antibiotics by uh, vaccination, the acute infection, prevent the acute, we are preventing or treating the, the acute infections. Mm -hmm. What remains now are the chronic phase. Mm -hmm. So bacteria have learned to persist like viruses mm -hmm. in form which are invisible to the immune system mm -hmm. and uh, invisible to the treatment as well. Mm. So going back to the idea of the uh, the guiding field, the field that guides the embryo and guides the growth, that must exist in some sense. I mean, from what you were just saying, my first image was of a, you know, a, a, some kind of coherent radio signal outside, the, you know, the, surrounding the embryo in some sense that has formed itself in some way to surround it and be a, be a pilot, as you called it. Now I'm also thinking from what you're saying about uh, uh, yeah, these ghost, these ghost images that here we are, the whole body is a watery environment. Let's think about, let's think now about the healthy cells. 
the healthy cells could be, by radio frequency emission, creating at all times a kind of ghost of themselves that, such that the field, in some sense, the field may exist in that form as well. I can't make, this is just a new idea I had, I can't make it more precise. And in some sense, those ghost cells are, are there also in the blood, let's say. Not only the bacteria, but the healthy uh, ghosts. Yes, I mean, the, the self is only the cell we see. Yes. Something uh, bigger yes. or uh, more harmonious, more organized than the other cells. Yes. It's quite possible. Yeah. It really gives you a, it just opens the mind to so many possibilities. Well, but it helps with solving this is the main problem. You know, differentiation there, how an embryo is constructed. Yeah. No, we cannot do it. We cannot understand it. We know yeah. how to induce the cell differentiation, yeah. but we don't know how to make a new organs, a new heart, a new liver, yes. a new brain. But this probably will come if we can solve ah. that. Ah, right. We can solve that problem. Hmm. So, you know, well, of course, this is uh, science fiction that we can I imagine you can prolong the life uh, many hundred years. Yes. You can replace your heart. Your heart yes. is, uh, is used probably more than the other organs. Right. Of course, the problem is the brain. You cannot change your brain, otherwise, <laughs> you will lose your, your personality. But uh, mm -hmm. you can at least replace most of the organs and live uh, mm -hmm. 700 years. Mm -hmm. Thousand years. Mm -hmm. So the yes, so the limitation on organ regeneration now is the is the conceptual limitation that people are still thinking simply in terms of elements of, elements. of the biochemical elements, yes, the, the yeah. building block approach. Yes, yes. In fact, you have to take that petri dish with the liver in it and put it in the right radio frequency and light frequency and, and you make whatever another. else, and then. You make, make the whole environment yes. correct, and then you get, then it grows. Yes. Yeah. It's just it's it's uh, frustrating. As it's so exciting, yet also frustrating that uh, we need more. I'm just thinking as you speak. How many people do we have working on this? Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's the beginning of something. At the beginning, there are very few people. When we discover it's we have ten. People believing in each other. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Millions. Yes. Uh, so this will come. But uh, yes, yeah. I agree that uh, unfortunately uh, there are very few people with very limited means, and uh, this of course is slowing down the, the research on that subject. Mm -hmm. So you uh, you are working on presently. You would like to get reproduction of this in other labs. Yes. I think this is very important. Mm -hmm. And the second uh, subject is to try to find a specific signals associated with a specific DNA yes. sequence. Yes. And how, how does that go? Have, have you been able to differentiate any bacteria yet? Uh, is there, is there we are working, uh, we try to simplify the model in you know, a small uh, DNA sequence. Ah, and right. trying to modify it to see yeah. when we get the signal, when we don't get the signal. So thinking this is probably associated with some single standard sequence. No, mm -hmm. DNA is a double helix, but so can mm -hmm. open up and form a single standard structure mm -hmm. for each strand. Are there any hints of, uh, of, of uh, breakthrough there yet? Well, it's too early, too early. <laughs> too early to say, no? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, um, did you hear about the, the experiment recently that was published on the uh, spin selectivity of DNA? That they, they coded a, a metal, what was it? They, they coded some yeah. surface with DNA, right. and they fired uh, electrons, I believe. And just... Right. The, the, the electrons were all of different uh, polarity, or different different polarization, spin, spin polarization. But in their interaction with DNA, when they were right. reflected, they all were reflected with this with a with a certain chiral orientation. Right. I'm wondering if, if you were familiar with that, or if you had thoughts about uh, you know this property of DNA to to select uh, certain candidates. 
I, I read this, but I think this was done mostly for application, for computer application, using the DNA molecules for yeah, I think that's uh, how they storing, were thinking. storing uh, yeah. information or something. Uh, yeah, like. but you could reverse it. Like I could reverse, you yes. You could reverse it. I could reverse it, yes, with water. You have to see the attraction mm -hmm. with water. No, this, uh, the DNA molecule is a marvelous molecule, I would say. It's, uh, has been, uh, I don't know if it was <laughs> invented, but we, my, my uh, idea is that the model of DNA was in water. Water can also make helical structure, so we can think that at the beginning of life, at the origin of life on this planet, water may be receiving some wave from the space or by just a random effect could uh, make helix on which nucleotides could be arranged. And this mm -hmm. was the beginning of the helix, mega literally double helix. So water was first to create the DNA, mm -hmm. perhaps. Of course, once DNA was formed, then it was a magnificent memory because it's very stable, and uh, we are built on that. You know. mm -hmm. Every invention of life was kept on DNA, when, of course, the proteins were also introduced in the system. But DNA was first, or RNA. RNA or DNA was first. But it was, I would say, not the real first, the second, <laughs> the second first. The first, first was, was water. The water. Mm -hmm. But water organized by maybe some waves coming from the space. So you can imagine, mm -hmm. actually, the DNA is not peculiar to our planet. Maybe all the lives in the universe will be made on DNA. Mm -hmm. So maybe we are not the first, perhaps. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yes. The energy invention that came from uh, other universe, other planets. There are many, many different, there's much evidence on another aspect of this which you're touching on here, which is the question of the interaction of life with cosmic radiation, you know, other radiation from space. That continues, I mean, there were many, a lot of interesting work done over many years showing that Frank O. Brown comes to mind. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He was an American biologist uh, active in the 40s and 50s. He just did one experiment after another showing the ways that uh, um, that living processes, like, like the, you know, the opening of clamshells uh, and other things. He moved clamshells from a harbor in New Haven, uh, uh, at the sea to Chicago. And after a certain amount of time, they began to pick up the signal, uh, how they would open up as if they were, as if the tide, as if the moon, mm -hmm. the lunar tide mm -hmm. of Chicago was being detected by them some way. But he had isolated them from, uh, you know, completely, they were in a box, they were completely isolated from, uh, they, still, uh, uh, they still got the signal somehow, yeah, the, signal. the lunar, lunar solar signal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then he did other things that showed correlations to it, to cosmic ray uh, uh, variations in, in growth processes. He studied certain plants and so forth. There was a tremendous amount of, uh, again, there was a tremendous amount of evidence there of he and there were other collaborators. Again, it's one of those areas that I think we were discussing earlier, mm -hmm. like, like the attack on you, that anything that suggests that life is, is, uh, uh, is something uh, cannot be simply explained by, from the ground up by the laws of physics or by the element theory of elementary particles uh, is, you know, gets, is rejected. Uh, or, yeah, the, 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 there's, a, there's a tendency for it to be crushed. So this has been your experience, and it's, it's, uh, it was the experience of Gorvich, really, after nice. why Gorvich didn't get out. Uh, but we are lucky having a system which is very accurate in the DNA sequence. It's chemistry, it's not biology, it's chemistry. Yeah. And <laughs> right. uh, uh, I think our work also put the emphasis on very low frequencies, you know. Yes. Not only looking at cosmic rays, like uh -huh. visible light, but also very low frequency, which right. may have a very low energy, carry a very low energy, and uh, life may be built on more 
on very low energy changes. That the direct coupling is there is to that low energy. The coupling of the, yeah, that, yes. that makes sense. Yes. And yet it also is employing these others because the, the, the evidence for the biophotons is, is irrefutable to, to in my view. You know, since Gorevich, it has been proven and proven again. The, the, uh, Pop in, uh, in, in Germany has demonstrated this over mm -hmm. and over. And other and then it's been reproduced that there there is this biophoton emission uh, at the ultraviolet uh, in the ultraviolet but frequency. The, now that may be a mechanism by which life is is operating. It may not be the silly, yes. uh, but it's there. But the problem is uh, in the manual books, you know, this is executed in one sentence. Nobody has been able to reproduce so and so on. Biophot. Oh, they'll say that. Yeah. Even that uh, experiments. It's incredible. Yeah. I think, fortunately, we're entering in a more solid uh, phase in which uh, we can uh, really prove this, prove uh, the, uh, the effect of radiation of any kind. Do you continue to get support in, in France? At least some? No? Mm, very little, very little. But enough, to, you have enough to carry on these experiments you're describing. Just about. Just about. And the, the situation in China is going to take some time. It may take some time, but we have also uh, support from other countries, you know, uh, mm -hmm. European countries, United States. We have this, uh, those meetings mm -hmm. on water organized by uh, Pollock, yeah. Pollock mm -hmm. which are very good for that's been a help, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm curious uh, if you had unlimited resources, uh, what, are, are there types of experiments that maybe right now are not necessarily uh, feasible or practicable, but that you think could be designed to really, just as a thought experiment, uh, you know, what would be the types of things that you think would be the most exciting um, most applications or uh, experimental kinds of apparatus or uh, well we, we, we uh, of course uh, now we are working uh, by hands mostly the dilutions you know that's is important oh, yeah. in our uh, system infiltration dilutions but we are thinking of uh, robotize to robotize this make a robot for oh. Mm -hmm. this. So this is one of the goals of our company. Oh. And uh, this will extend the possibility to analyze, uh, to use this in practical uh, setting, you know, in uh, clinical laboratories, for instance, to detect and treat early on some chronic diseases. Because we, yeah. our system detects the automatic signals from patient's DNA having uh, Alzheimer, uh, Parkinson, uh, multiple yeah. sclerosis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. So we, we can already focus on a clinical diagnosis. This, this is the way we are trying to make money for employee extending our sources. By the way, that implies that implies when you, for example, rheumatoid arthritis is uh, considered an immune. That's not considered a bacterial uh, infection. It, it of was, but it, it, I think that implies perhaps it is. As there are well, people. Well, there are course, people who any, say any kind of autoimmune disease is caused by an infectious agent at the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. they, we, they, we cannot mm. be autoimmune against ourselves unless mm -hmm. some external agent mimics some of our proteins. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the case of bacterial infection, or rheumatoid arthritis, uh, the, the most candidate, this was an old theory actually, that could be a bacterial infection, a persisting bacterial infection. Yes, yes, and I've read that. I, I wonder if, the, so do you believe that could still be true? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay, yes. yeah. And uh, we are working with a group of clinicians in France Yes. Uh, which are already putting into practice the long-term antibiotic treatment. For arthritis? 
for arthritis, rheumatoid ah. arthritis, for ah. the other disease I was mentioning, neurodegenerative disease, and also, and this is also, we give us a lot of problem, autism, autism. Autism, yes, which also may be a... a it's incredible, the, resistance. the aggressive resistance reaction. Yeah. You know, yeah. we, we have clinicians, they are general practitioners, but we have yeah. also uh, clinicians which have, a, a, I would say, uh, an academic position. Yeah. And those uh, physicians are uh, really uh, scared, you know, to not to come back, to come in our group, not to use uh, too much of our uh, lessons or because of the pressure from the other side. You know, they may lose their position, may lose their credit. Yeah. This is terrible, yeah. especially for autism. For autism, yeah, because, well, partly because it's such an effect on the family and there's this tremendous... It's a terrible emotional, disease, it's, it's a terrible, emotional a thing, terrible yeah. disease and uh, <laughs> it's in the hands of psychiatrists and they don't want to hear about yeah. infection, organic uh, cause yeah. and so on. Right. This is terrible for the parents, terrible right. for the child. Well, what bacteria is it? Um, it seems to be common bacteria. This is the un peu our surprise, you know. We will look at the species because we have some yeah. molecular tools to yeah. try to identify. We we uh, and with some very common bacteria, like Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. So we are thinking perhaps some strain of those. You know, it's not only the bacterium itself. It's maybe a gene or a plasmid mm -hmm. DNA mm -hmm. which. Is involved in the disease, mm. not the whole bacterial infection. I, res I knew a. Um, but antibiotic treatment does a lot against or yes. also the bacterial origin. Yes. Uh, in a study not published in France, we have a, a recent meeting with 58%, 58% of the autistic children were improved, their conditions were improved by long term antibiotic treatment, mm -hmm. whatever the cause. Whatever cause. Yeah, well, it certainly worked for me with Lyme disease. Uh, I, th that was, as I mentioned, I got exploring on this question. I, I met an um, old infectious disease specialist who came up with this idea back in the 60s or 70s and tried to apply it and had some success. That He had the idea that a number of these diseases, pretty much the list that you just gave, were due to a bacterial agent. He thought probably, maybe an Ehrlichia, Mycoplasma, something mm, very small, small, small something very small. And he was convinced that it was going into the uh, bone marrow. That, you know, because infectious disease specialist mm. is working with the, what is it called? He sent me a hematopoiesis. The, mm. the, uh, the, the, that he was convinced that that's that, that it was express it would go in that the infection is in the bone marrow very hard to get to mm. and then sometimes expressing itself in the in the blood sometimes not sometimes you could mm. find mm. things in the red, in the red blood cell sometimes not mm. but it could it could stay in there i wonder if that might so, so i think it's a interesting idea he he had had a number of startling successes treating one of the diseases he treated was lupus Mm -hmm. And another one was, I think he said, I think he said leukemia. It was a, it was a mm -hmm. uh, terminal case. It was a relative of his. So it got to the point where they just, even though he was the head of the department, they just wouldn't let him do this. They wouldn't let it. All he wanted to do was use antibiotic therapy with people who were dying anyway. That's why I, I can't understand why they wouldn't, you know, it, there has to be something else going on when they won't let him but do the dogma this. is you should not treat more than three weeks with antibiotics it's yeah. in the medical dogma yeah which is completely stupid because yeah uh, it's against uh, the idea is to prevent resistance but resist resistant bacteria emerge when you have a lot of bacterial infection there's not enough antibiotics but in a, in, a, in, a, in that case you have a very persisting very low level persisting Yes. Bacterial infection. Yes. And a lot of antibiotics. You want to induce resistance in that case. Yes. And this is the example of HIV. HIV, you're treating for life with uh, inhibitors of the virus. And in that case, it's like the antibiotic for bacteria. Yeah. If you stop, you induce resistance. If you don't stop, you don't have any resistance. Of course, with John Sides' idea on the AIDS 
being syphilis, the, uh, my first thought on hearing that was, well then, antibiotic treatment should, should work. I looked into it, I found in fact there was a doctor in New York who was treating, uh, yeah, who was treating a, uh, AIDS patients with doxycycline and penicillin, uh, oral, and, uh, and getting good results for the time that he did yes. it. It was a limited, it was a limited I, I came to the same uh, yeah. type of treatment uh, starting from another idea which was uh, in the early 90s, mycoplasma, co-infection. The idea of co-infection is important. It means one, one agent can be not very harmful, but mm -hmm. when there is a second agent, it becomes highly virulent mm -hmm. and cause disease. This is the example of the, of the bees. Uh, the bees recently have been shown to become very sensitive to pesticide uh -huh. if they are previous infection by a small uh, bag, a small acarian. So they are both an infection and exposure and, to pesticide, they die. Oh, and that was the problem that we had recently with the bee population? Yes. So now this is an example of another you know, a concept which is very important yes. in medicine now. Yes. Co-infection. Yes. And I tried to, both have this, to bring up this uh, idea in AIDS with not much success, but I won't bear the time where we had no very specific, very important viral inhibitors, I could uh, keep alive some patient with long-term antibiotic treatments uh, acting on the co-infectious, co-infection by mycoplasma or bacteria, doxycycline. In the, AID, in the AIDS case? In the AIDS case. And you did that in the 90s? Yes, before, before uh, the, 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 before the triple therapy was uh, used. The, the improvement in the, in the antiviral. Oh, I see. So you think, uh, would, you, would you recommend that that should still be done? Or well, we should explore that now. We run new molecular tools and uh, mm -hmm. using the detection of signal, signals mm -hmm. in many AIDS patients, not, not all, many HIV, HIV infected patients. We find the signals coming not only from the virus DNA, but also some, some bacterial DNA, especially in Africa. Ah, you can distinguish viral and bacterial yes, DNA. Yes, by filtration. The size of the nanostructure, oh. the neons, oh, is yes. smaller from by viral DNA means. than from bacterial I meant, but, but, but not by... Uh, not by the not signal, by the signal. signaling yeah. yet. Yeah. But then not we can yet. confirm by a PCR, you know, by, yes, of course. a specific... Uh, CR yes. Primers. Yes. So, so this, this and you're finding this in Africa. I mean, again, going back to Saad's idea, which intrigued me, that the the syphilis must be present and widespread in the in the homosexual population, and uh, and it must be very widespread in Africa. It's not that's a disease that's never been eliminated there. Uh, so I thought that it must, at the very least, be a significant co-infection. Well, it may, it may be co not uh, only one bacterial species, you know, several kinds of bacterial infections. Because, yeah. again, in those cases of patients with yeah. HIV, we find common bacteria like Staphylococcus, yeah. you know, yeah. Streptococcus. Right. So we should not only think of speci specific species, but in You're fact, right. there is bacterial yeah. infection inducing yeah. immune activation. Yes. Is the real phenomenon which activated HIV, which uh, promoted uh, well, HIV multiplication? This would explain why Africa is, of course, why Africa is, so, because mm -hmm. the, the population is so immune suppressed, the levels of sanitation are so reduced, every aspect of public yes, health I'm, is so I'm low. Always, or, that, always amazed because, you know, there is an obvious difference between. The situation in Africa and the situation in the north yeah. uh, concerning HIV infection. In the north, you have to, to, to see that the, most of the infection concern homosexual with number of partners yeah. and some drug abusers, not the general population. Yeah. In Africa, it's an heter heterosexually transmitted disease. 60% yeah. of the new cases are women, infected, infected women. Mm -hmm. So there is obviously a difference. Yeah. And uh, when you raise that problem, they, you know, people think, well, the, the AIDS establishment does not, it's not very concerned by this. It's, uh, 
they are saying maybe because the sexual activity of African is yes. much higher than the yeah. sexual activity, which is completely nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, don't, they don't realize this is a real problem which is not explained. Yeah? Of course, the, some have uh, tried to explain this by co-infection, by various infection, herpes, genital herpes, and so on. Uh. It's, it's true uh, on the local, but there is more than that. And the difference seems to be at the bacterial, at the bacterial infection are much more important and common in African patients. Of course, we have not made a statistical, statistical right. study, but you know, as we are now uh, making more clinical trials, trying to cure the infection, so adding some supplementary treatments in, uh, associated with antiretroviral treatments. We can study this in more detail. You have a clinic, or you have places have, where this is being tried yes, in Africa? Yes, uh, our foundation, which is linked to UNESCO, uh, has uh, created or contribute to, contributed to create a cent research center in Africa. We have one working very well in Abidjan, I recall, despite the political turmoil, and also in Cameroon, in Yaoundé, and maybe also in South Africa, we are now a new context. Mm -hmm. So it's a possibility, a raised possibility to have, to do some clinical trial with a population of uh, HIV infected patient, treated or not treated by antiretrovirals. And you'll use the antiretroviral and also antibiotic the, combination? The uh, antibiotic we haven't started yet. We oh. started in the early time, before we had the anti antiretrovirals. But it was a period of, of a time in which uh, clinician will not uh, use anything anything else than anything but the antiretroviral. Oh. So they were they believed that they could cure the patient. Right. But now, since they realize they cannot cure the patient, they are more at least some have a more open mind. So it, indeed, we can combine antiretrovirals, uh, antibiotics, and maybe immunostimulants because the immune system yeah. is not completely restored by the antiretroviral treatment. So we, have we, we, ha we have to treat the whole person. Really, we have to treat the whole nation because Africa is, even after you cure the disease, the, the situation is so terrible in so many countries that uh, you have to cure. Yeah, but we have to start by an end, one end. <laughs> we you know? need to do it all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. this will uh, spread uh, to other problems. Later. Yeah. If we can cure AIDS, it will be a great achievement. It will be a great achievement, yes. yes. Do you have other thoughts on outside of DNA per se, but the way that the way that the internal regulation is actually carried out in terms? You mentioned the the, the uh, seven hertz cycle in the brain, but how that might lead to a, a, a different view of the organization of the, the, of the whole central nervous system, um, and in fact the, the the whole body as as you know capable of, of both. Producing and then receiving. See, the interesting thing is the, both producing internally, but also receiving externally, and and at, at all these different scales. I'm wondering if your thoughts on the on the difference of scale in terms of the receptivity of these low frequency uh, radiation. Well, I just I, I, I did, That's all. <laughs> that uh, probably the uh, the. Life has been uh, constructed to, of course, to, to receive the information from the outside or signaling from the outside, but also to protect against this. If, you were, if we assume the electromagnetic signal is uh, participate to the harmony or the, the unification you know, of, the, uh, of the organism, it has to protect itself from the external influence. Mm -hmm. So I would probably assume, this is just an idea, that we have some protection against the mm -hmm. outside uh, mm -hmm. uh, signaling. This explains why we can live yes. with a uh, background uh, enormous. Yeah. It's interesting uh, with our system because it's very primitive, but we can detect the noise. And the noise in all large cities is very high. Yeah. Very high. Yeah. In, on the contrary, in Africa, it's very low. Mm -hmm. The radio frequency. The radio, the well, the, the low frequency low we are frequency, using yeah. for yeah. Uh, resonance, yes. uh, resonating the DNA. Yeah. 
Well, you get the six, you get the sixty hertz hum everywhere. For you, the it's sixty fi- hertz, fifty hertz. The fifty or sixty hertz yeah. uh, down to uh, Professor Tesla <laughs> is everywhere now. Also, even in Africa. Yeah. But uh, it's a very low magnetic field. But uh, it's quite possible that he had some influence on the epidemics of bacterial infection mm-hmm. by increasing the number of nanions of form to persist. And uh, why more in Africa? Uh, why it should be more, of course, in our country than in Africa. Mm-hmm. It's not the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe they are counteracting sig- waves. Mm-hmm which uh, preventing the effect of the low frequency by generated by the electric power. Mm. And in Africa, you have most mostly the electric power, no match so far, uh, other sources of electromagnetic waves. This may change with, of course, the industrialization of Africa. Mm. I think the, the, the seasonal, the expression of certain season, seasonal relations um, to solar cycles in diseases. It's quite also possible, you know, in, in the equatorial, uh, uh, in the equatorial regions, you have not exposed to the same <coughs> magnetic field on the Earth yes. than in the pole. Yes, there are a lot of differences, yeah. Mm. So there are a lot of influence, and some are contacting the others. That's why we are still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. It's also interesting to think, as long as we're in the speculative realm of, you know, how you would maintain life outside of the electromagnetic field of Earth. You know, in, yes, in uh, I, I wonder if we send somebody to Mars, what would be happened during the, the trip? Mm-hmm. Right. Beyond just the the, uh, the cosmic the radiation. Cosmic radiation. Yeah, we might have to supply in a gravitational field and also an electromagnetic one. Maybe. Artificial. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, there will be some uh, waves corresponding for you know, connection, of course. The, the astronauts will be talking with the radio, yeah. by, by right. radio all the time. Right. I'd be curious, just in terms of your perspective, having actually worked, done experimental work for so long, um, on how, you know, going really from the, the origins of molecular biology, discovery of DNA, you know, discovery of uh, viruses and so forth. Um, I know it's a, it's a sort of a broad sweep to take at once, but it, it, I'm just curious, having you having lived through it and worked through Absolutely. it, what your sense of, I guess, directions and, and, and um, the level of discussion, maybe, uh, or the, the, the types of, of um, even just the experimental work itself, how, how it's changed, and, and you know, your sense of, particularly now with uh, you know what, what you might impart to the younger generation, which is sort of faced with these questions, but in, in somewhat adverse circumstances, I think, thinking about the future. Well, I, I should say that I live. With that from the beginning, I was very enthusiastic, actually. I was in a British laboratory at the time, uh, uh, not the Nobel Express discovery, was a little bit before, but I lived, uh, I actually, I attended a course of biophysics at the Queen King's College uh, in London, where the first uh, X-ray diffraction experiments oh. were done by Maurice Wilkins and uh, uh-huh. Lane Franklin. And I could oh. see the small apparatus to ex- stretch the fibers you know, of DNA, the B form, the DNA hydrated, the hydrated B form, to show the first uh, diffraction diagram. She was and we were uh, learned, taught to how to build up some uh, molecular models, you know, the double helix. Mm-hmm. So I, I was, actually, at that time, I was working on double thread RNA. You know, I was looking for a double strand RNA uh, in the replication of RNA viruses. You were looking already for a double strand I was the first to publish uh, with my boss in Nature, 
a paper called the replicative form of uh, encephalomicrosis carditis virus RNA, which was a double-stranded form. I work on the double-stranded RNA. Well, you already knew it was double-stranded? No, I was looking for a show. I show it for the first time. Think, what made you think that, that it would be? Well, at that time, there were several models for replication of RNA, you know? Ah. And some people, as uh, Saul Spiegelman, thought uh, RNA, and like DNA, could replicate by having the same strand. The mm -hmm. One strand makes the same mm -hmm. strand. Mm -hmm. in, in case of DNA, the, the strand makes a, a complementary strand. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to see, uh, the one model was that, but, but looking for this. That if there should be a complementary strand, we should find some double stranded RNA inside the cell. And I found that. That's fascinating. <laughs> what year was that? Huh? That when? was 1953. It was published or? in 1963. Yes, published in, in Nature. In 63? 63, 1963. Oh. And this RNA was relatively easy to isolate because it was RNA is resistant. And I have a model of infectious RNA. And this RNA, of course, double strand RNA was also infectious. The single strand was, but also the double strand RNA was infectious as well. So just by looking at that infectious peak, being RNA resistant, I could detect this double strand RNA. Hmm. So this was my first, uh, would say, uh, fait d'armes right. <laughs> in the field of uh, research and uh, so I was at the first uh, phase of molecular bi biology. Then uh, I was more oriented on the protein, membranes, cancer uh, in the 80s, in the 70s between and 80s. So I, don't, I did not miss completely by, I didn't uh, participate myself very much in the clone, molecular cloning you know, and so on the restriction on enzyme and so on. But uh, mm -hmm. I follow the field very carefully mm -hmm. and have some people in my lab working on that. But my first, uh, uh, I, was, so I was very impressed by molecular biology to yeah. solve many, many problems. But yeah. now I think we are, well, there is still some, uh, I would say, Developments of microbiology was very interesting. I'm not you know, denying it. But no. I think we now we are going to a new phase, mm -hmm. a new, uh, including new paradigms, mm. including the waves. And uh, I think the new microbiology should, of course, include the old molecular biology, yes. the con this contact between atoms, particles, but also waves as well. Oh, what do we call this? Do we have a name for it yet? Is it well, wave uh, Jacques Bevin is called that digital biology. <laughs> oh, digital biology. Digital I, I, don't, I, I don't like digital that so biology. Much. But yeah, yeah. That, but that refers to a specific application he had. But maybe wave biology. Wave biology is something like that. Yes, or, uh, we can find. Uh, we should work on, if we get a good uh, name. Greek this roots. We have to look at Greek roots. <laughs> maybe, but uh, yes, I think. Uh, we are, be, we are bringing something, you know, new to explain precisely what molecular biology cannot explain. You know? We can have an analytical attitude, which is to dissect, to uh, say what kind of genes, you know. Now we have the fast DNA sequencing, which is something also very important. You know, we can sequence billions of uh, nucleotides in a very short period of time. Yeah. But the, this is now is applied to see, you know, we can sequence the genome of uh, cancer cells, compare it to a normal cell and see the difference. But so what? Yeah. <laughs> Does not explain how this is yes. constructed, uh, how this originated? And yeah. my view of, of cancer is that, you know, whatever you do against cancer cells, you know, whatever chemo or radiation, you can do the, the cells is able to use all the mm -hmm. possible solutions in the, in the genome. So it, mm -hmm. the cell will find a solution to resist to the treatment mm -hmm. you are addressing to. Mm -hmm. So the only way to pre to cancer, for cancer is to prevent the condition of cancer. Mm -hmm. Once you have a cancer, it's very difficult to get rid of it. 
What, speaking of, uh, you mentioned ben, the digital biology. What, did, did Jacques Benvenisse overextend himself with that? You know, I, I read the claim. I remember reading about Benvenisse first in 1988-89. It was clear to me that he had been very unjustly attacked. That episode with the that idiot from uh, uh, Nature magazine, and they brought the magician. That that was a disgrace, a really an, an, an international disgrace. But then I read, then later into the 1990s, he, he made the claim, uh, this is what I read, I mean, I'm sure you know the truth, uh, that's why I want to ask you, I, I read that he made the claim that, yes, it, it is a signal, and in fact, you know, we could record the signal and we could transmit it over a telephone line or some other system, and then there were attempts to, to do it, and or from what I read, they didn't succeed. Is that true that they didn't succeed, or maybe they really well, did? Well, they, did, did did they did succeed uh, in some cases, not always. Uh huh. And I was, like you, I was very skeptical at that mm. time uh, for this kind of experiments. I accepted the high dilution effect, but not the, the digital transmission. But I found the same. No, I know. This is why I'm not talking. I found I'm the same. I'm not speaking I, about I, now. Actually, we can. Yes. yes, we. Yes, we can. We can transmit. So, so internet, we can do it. To internet, a recorded signal uh -huh. and reproduce the DNA. So that signal. The reason for his failure was just some technical problem. Uh, not not, not, not as only that. I think he was working on a biological system, you know, and uh, he was looking for a biological effect of, yeah. a, of, a, of a molecule. Right. And of course, you can always criticize because the biological effect. Could be similar, oh, not see. identical. You can always say it's see. not exactly. With DNA, we can. We can yeah. see if we can transmit the, the sequence. Some people like uh, speak about teleportation. It's not exactly yeah. teleportation. No. But uh, right. yes, we can. If we get a proper recording of the uh, electromagnetic signal coming from the yeah. water, well, have you di done water that? dilution, we have done it. Yes. You have done it. And you have actually recreated a, a, sequ a the sequence, DNA sequence of DNA. Really? So then that shows that it, well, and what is the form of the recording? What is the, the form? recording? What, what is the recording? Uh, the recording is uh, audio? on a computer. It's an audio. Yes, it's audio. It's a signal on a computer. I mean, is it it's processed? It's a process signal. It is a process. Processed like music. Like okay, music. So it's, okay. okay, so, but it's Fourier synthesized. Now, the reason I ask is I'm wondering, the, the question in all of this is, do we have the whole signal? We, we see that we detect a 7 hertz, we detect certain harmonics it of that. It means we have the, sig the complete signals. Of course, you have uh, first is analog, ad ad analogs, and then you have yeah. to convert it to digital yeah. for transmission, and then yeah. reconvert again yeah. from digital to analogs to retrieve the DNA. So it's a com very complex system. Oh, OK. So, it's, it like a, so it it's like a music CD. It's been digitally exactly, recorded and exactly, then exactly. played back. Mm -hmm. But then it, it means that it is the that it is the uh, since our detector is a radio frequency. It means it's the radio frequency that's in that's the critical thing here, not other frequencies that, that we were talking about before, like the light or the infrared or no, no, or, an no. electric, just, or an electric field. It's just in the range of. Uh, Low frequency. 10, uh, 7 to 20 yeah. kilohertz. Oh. We looked at the work of, of a Russian biogeochemist, the name of Vladimir Vernadsky. Vernadsky. Mm, yeah. He took a couple of these key things, for example, isotope fractionation. Um, he thought that, that was, there was something much more significant about the state of, of the living organism, the living state that was projecting itself in something like isotope fractionation, that it wasn't simply mechanical. Um, he also did a very deep study. The, the whole last part of his life was looking at Pasteur and Curie's work on dissymmetry and, and uh, you know, the, the dysymmetry of optical active isomers. And, and you know, he thought that this expressed, again, something fundamental in the living state, which, which distinguished it, it, it from the non-living. And you could see expressions of it. You could see it in the biosphere as a whole, in, in the creation of new forms and more intensive migrations of different chemical elements. But um, 
he thought that this could be a, a point of collaboration to, to rework a lot of fundamental concepts, but do it from the standpoint that you know, often what you see living systems are capable of, of carrying out can only be done at the extremes in non-living systems. You know, the, the sorts of things like uh, superfluidity, or at least analog things like superfluidity, um, chirality, and so forth, require extreme you know, conditions to get in the laboratory, whereas they seem to occur effortlessly in the organism. And it just seems that, that it, there's something about that idea that, that I think was lost and, and a lot of avenues that, that could have been pursued, you know, from the 30s onward were, I think, maybe now only starting to rediscover, but it seemed like a lot of ground was lost when we lost that idea. Mm. Yes, uh, it's um, a very strange world of in which uh, science seems to expand, but uh, not, the, not the ideas, the, the concepts are shrinking. Science is expanding, but mm. the concepts are shrinking mm -hmm. in biology yeah. and, uh, as you said, in physics as well. Mm -hmm. More and more empirical data, but less yes. of the, mm. yeah. I was thinking now we are going to a world uh, we are seeking new source of energy, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Fission, nuclear fission is not, of course, a solution, but maybe uh, fusion will be. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Omer uh, comes again the idea of cold fusion. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert, but I think some, still some physicists are thinking cold fusion mm -hmm. is possible, and especially coming from Russia. So maybe there should be a, an, 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 an incentive to, uh, an excitement to mm -hmm. develop, you know, by looking new source of energy, we may develop new, new concepts, perhaps. Mm -hmm. You said the, the imperative might force a new... Yeah, the yeah, empirical needs. Uh, may force people to come yeah. back to <laughs> old, new yeah, ideas. We, we've thought a lot about this, that, that you know, this is really the way to, to think about national policy, is that a, a, a true, you know, in the, 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 the true national interest is, is pushing exactly those kinds of programs where you don't necessarily know what the research is going to give you, but it's a, it's a driver. You yes. know, we, we had saw elements of it with the space program in a limited way, but the idea is you, you define a mission, and in the course of trying to carry that out, you will find a whole Exa new exactly. scientist branch yeah. out. Of so uh, I think the the, you know, the state government or the, 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 you know, the world nation should have set up some kind of Manhattan project, not to make an atomic bomb, but to make mm -hmm. new source yeah. of energy coming from nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This implies that our politicians are sensitive to the to good scientific advisors, not the ones which are putting the around the politicians, which are just trying to you know to, to go along the the lines of the politicians, the short term mm. lines. Mm. 